Hello, today let's prove drawdown's lemma. This lemma is very useful when calculating the contour integrals, and we will frequently use this lemma in future video. So let's prove it today. And first, let's see what drawdown's lemma says. Suppose we have a semicircle contour with a radius r on the upper half plane, and we mark it as cr. Then this integral will vanish when the radius r goes to infinity if it satisfies the following three conditions. The first condition is a is positive real number. The second one is we can find an upper bound for the modulus of the function g on this semicircle. And note here, this upper bound only depends on the radius r, not depends on the angle theta. The third condition is this upper bound approaches to zero when the radius r goes to infinity. If all the three conditions are satisfied, then this integral will vanish when the radius r goes to infinity. So let's get started. Before we prove this lemma, we need to show two properties, and we will use them later. Here is property number one. We want to show this integral is equal to twice of this red color integral and f is an arbitrary function, only depends on the sine theta. For short, we define this red color integral as capital A. So first, we split this integral into two parts at pi over 2. And we define this blue color integral as capital B. So if we can show B equals to A, then we are done. I copy the integral B here. And then we make a substitution. We let theta plus beta equals to pi, so d theta equals to minus d beta. And from the symmetry for the sine function, we got sine theta equals to sine beta. After plugging the substitution, we got here. And we use this minus sine to flip the lower and upper limit. So we got here. And if we compare this integral with this red color integral, they are exactly the same. So it equals to the capital A. And we are done for the property number one. Now let's look at property number two. And we want to show this inequality. So first, let's see what this inequality means intuitively. Here is a plot for the two functions. And you can see the red curve is always above the blue curve. So obviously it's true for this inequality. But to make it rigorous, let's prove it. And first, we define function f here. So it's equivalent to show the function f is greater or equal to 1. Because we haven't proved it, we put a question mark here. And first, we check the two endpoints for this interval. At zero. We can calculate the limit by using L'Hopital's rule, and it's greater than 1. At pi over 2, the function f is equal to 1. So if we can prove the function f is monotonic decreasing on this interval, then we are done. So we take the derivative. And then we divide the cosine x on both numerator and the denominator. After divide the cosine x, the numerator goes to here. Then we flip the cosine x to the top. So this term is non-negative. And recall the inequality for x and the tangent x on this interval. So this blue term is less or equal to zero. So the derivative is less or equal to zero. Therefore, the function f is monotonic decreasing, and we can remove the question mark. So we are done for the property number two. Now we are ready to prove drawdown's lemma. First, we write z into the polar form. And then we do the derivative to find dz. And next, we write z by using Euler's formula. So this exponential factor can be written into this form. Then we plug in the substitution. And we know 
to prove the limit of i is zero is equivalent to prove the limit of the modulus is zero. So we take the modulus on i, and then we use this inequality. The modulus of the integral is less or equal to the integral on the modulus. And next, we write this blue term into this form. So for these three terms, their modulus equal to 1. And we got here. I copy them here. So first, we use a condition number 2. The modulus of the function g has an upper bound on this semicircle. So we got here. And note for this upper bound, it only depends on r, not depends on theta. So we can take this term out of the integral. So we got here. Now we use the property number 1. And we got here. And note for the upper limit. It's converted to half pi. And next, we use a property number 2. Note for the property number 2. It's valid for the theta between 0 and half pi. And that's why we need to apply the property number 1 first to convert the integral upper limit from pi to half pi. For this red color integral, it's simple, so we just integrate it. Then we plug in numbers. 2r cancel out. And we got here. Then we take the limit. Now we use the condition number 1. Because a is positive, so this term vanishes when the radius r goes to infinity. And finally, we use the condition number 3. Because the upper bound goes to 0, so the limit goes to 0. Therefore, we complete the proof for drawdown slama. And don't forget to subscribe my channel and give a like.